joined right now by Greg DeHart. He is an uh, Emmy Award winning producer and he is the sort of the driving force behind this new documentary about Max Patkin. Max Patkin was called the Clown Prince of Baseball. So welcome to Preferred Company, Greg DeHart. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Baseball and documentaries. What could be better? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. If they could show your film in a baseball stadium, that might be the absolute pentacle of, uh, of of wonderful things. So tell us a little bit about you, Greg, and then tell us about this project that I know everybody is going to get such a charge out of. Max Patkin, what a funny spirit, you know, just a joyful spirit back in the old um, black and white days of baseball, let's put it that way. So tell us a little bit about your background and then talk about Max. So I'm a documentary filmmaker. Um, before that, I was a professional baseball player in the minor leagues. And uh, that didn't work out after about five years. And, you know, for a couple years after that, trying to figure out what I wanted to do, I settled into documentary filmmaking, which I've been doing for the last 30, 35 years or so. It's taken me, you know, around the world, around the country a lot. But I always came back to my days in the minor leagues playing baseball, which I love so much. And I always wanted to do a documentary about the minor leagues because I was so enthralled with, Small town America, um, how they, how the teams were kind of the center of the universe, and you know these small towns. It was their identity. But I wasn't really sure of kind of the angle, and you know the minor league baseball itself is a very broad subject. And I thought eh, I, it didn't kind of get to me until you know several years after my career had, as a documentary filmmaker had started to do something about Max Pampkin, who I had an encounter with when I was in the minor leagues. That always stuck with me. And here I am, 40 years later, about to finish this, uh, what I think is a really great film. We are so excited to see it. Does the film have a title right now? Working title right now is Max Packin, the Clown Prince of Baseball. Oh. Um, yeah, and you know we'll see how that ends up. I'm in the edit. We're in the edit bay right now, and oftentimes, you know, when you're in the bay um, and you're going through all the material, something will pop out and go, "Wait, that's a great title. Mm -hmm. That's that might be the title." So. That's, um, we haven't found that yet, um, but right now, Max Packin, the Clown Prince of Baseball. And you know what? I think people love baseball movies. They absolutely do. I can think of, I can think of ten of them without even blinking an eye right now. The great baseball films that are out there. It's it's guaranteed to be a, a delight. And so funny. Earlier in the show, quite by uh, quite by just chance, we were talking about Joe DiMaggio, and it, to, that was his inspiration for some of his crazy his crazy antics on the baseball field, right? So here is Max Pack, and he grows up in the 1930s, uh, 1920s, 30s in Philadelphia. Um, and he's a, he grows up as a huge baseball fan. And he's actually a really good baseball player. He played in the minor leagues also. Um, but unfortunately for his career, um, World War II interrupted it. Mm -hmm. And he ended up in the Navy. He um, actually he joined the Navy. Um, and he ended up in one of the kind of the great military stints of all time. He was stationed in Hawaii. And because he could play baseball, he was asked to play on the Navy baseball team there in Hawaii. During, during the war, um, you know, they would, they, they would to entertain the troops, they would play baseball where, you know, like in Hawaii, where there were bases and a lot of the um, soldiers were stationed. Um, and he played on, on, a, on a Navy team there. But what would also happen is the major league players would come through to entertain the troops also. And sure enough, one day, Joe DiMaggio came through with a group of players, and Max got to pitch against Joe DiMaggio. And it was, you know, Max was always a bit of a goofball. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, when he was when he was playing in the minor leagues before the war. And anyways, he gets a chance to pitch against one of the great players of all time. And Max, the first time he pitches against Joe DiMaggio, actually strikes him out. Mm. And this is at a game that is very ballyhooed. There are 
The stands are filled. There are probably 20,000 people in the stands. It's a packed stadium. The generals are there. And um, the second time that DiMaggio comes up to bat against Max Packin, mm-hmm. he hits a home run at he hits a home run that they both later would say is still traveling. It went into the Pacific Ocean. Wow. And Ma- so, and this is where his career begins because Max, who likes to clown during games, he instinctually, very spontaneously, throws his glove to the ground and follows Joe DiMaggio around the bases, <laughs> mimicking his his very distinct gait that Joe DiMaggio ran with, <laughs> and by the t- he's. Right behind Joe DiMaggio, the crowd is going crazy about what is happening. This pitcher is following Joe DiMaggio around the bases. And by the time they get to home plate, the crowd is going crazy, not to congratulate Joe DiMaggio, but to congratulate Max Packin, who just (laughs) followed him and mimicked him around the bases. And... That was his the, his first act as a clown, and after the war, when it was uh, he went back into baseball. Um, he hurt his arm; his career was over. But Joe DiMaggio and others never forgot that, and they said, "Max, you need to go out there and do this clown thing full time." And that's how his career began with the great Joe DiMaggio. Wow, that's incredible. What a great story. And you know, every now and then you'll get a baseball player that's got a little bit of personality, and uh, you just remember them, and you look forward to seeing them on the field. I'm thinking of John Cruck. Remember John Cruck, who worked uh, played for the Philadelphia Phillies on that wonderful team that won the World Series that was like uh, just a team of oddballs and misfits, and John Cruck wrote that um, that book, uh, I, I Ain't No Athlete Lady, I'm a Baseball Player, and and he was known for being kind of silly and 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 uh, on the field too. And people just love that; they absolutely love it. And I'm sure a lot of people came to the game just to watch his Max's on on field antics. Were you able to locate? footage because I know back in those days there was very very limited filming of games and especially in the minor leagues Um, were you able to locate any footage fortunately there were like during the 1940s um, newsreels right the black Mm -hmm. and white newsreels Um, you know and this is before television right when they would show in theaters so um, there were some yes there's a little bit of newsreel stuff but fortunately so Max's career actually lasted 50 years it started in 1944 and ended in 19, just late 1993. Mm. And he, so he, whenever he would go into these small little minor league towns, it would be a big deal that Max Packin was coming through to do his performance. And the local radio or the local television stations would always, it was a great story for them. So they would send out uh, you know, a report with a camera person. And that's a lot of the stuff that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of, you know, so when we get to like the 1970s, we've got a, a decent amount of footage of him. Um, and as it is, you know, doing documentaries, we learn to dig really deep. So, you know, we find things like, um, you know, some home movies. There's, you know, clips of home movies that people would take in the stands. Um, you know, eight millimeter, those old eight millimeter film cameras, um, all the way up until you know he retired in 1993. So yeah, we were able to find quite a bit of it, um, and that's a good thing because you know we've got a feature like documentary to fill visually, absolutely, visual yeah. mediums. <laughs> Yeah. Well, listen, uh, I tell you, you know, what, we are all we are all so excited to follow this film as it makes its way to uh, to our homes, however that does. Um, are you planning on releasing it to, to the film festival circuit, or are you going to do it as a, um, oh, there's so many options that you have now as a filmmaker, you know, you can go, uh, you have plans for it just yet, or uh, when is it going to be pro- uh, fin- uh, finished produced? Sure. So um, we'll be um, right now, as I say, I'm in the edit bay. Um, it look, right now, if I had to guess, we'll be done by the end of July. And at that point, um, the, the, the company that I work with, Sunplastic Pictures, is actually starting 
we're starting our own streaming service, um, which sounds probably crazy in this day and age, but we are, and it's going, you know, this is going to be one of the films that kicks off the service. It's called Sunstream, and that's where it's going to air first. Um, it's going to, you know, it's a little bit different for me. I do films, you know, for all the cable networks mm-hmm. and HBO and Netflix and all of that. Um, so this is kind of a really exciting time for us to be able to use this film to kick off a new streaming service. Well, I think that sounds awesome. And, you know, people, there has been a kind of a shift in the way people like to enjoy movies. Um, and so I think streaming, a lot of people are opting to watch films, even currently in the theater films, they're opting for this in-home streaming thing. And I think that'll be awesome, so much fun. And I am expecting that there will be, you know, probably plenty of little leagues that are going to want to have a, a group screening and things like that. So I know you're going to have nothing fun with this movie, you know, the whole show today um, has been about these great, iconic figures who've been really nice people. We started out just quite by accident talking about Willard Scott and what a joy he brought to news and to people and this kind of an old fashion kind of niceness that uh, you don't see too much. And it sounds to me like Max fits very nicely into that category, too, that he brought joy everywhere he would go. It is so true. He lived to make people laugh. He loved it. His act was actually during the game. Because the minor leagues, the stadiums are so small, it's a very, that intimate setting allows for, you know, a, in his case, a comic to really connect to the audience. And it was always really important to him to make sure the kids were laughing and having a good time. And he would you know, go up and talk into the, in the stand during his performance. And he connected the field and what was happening on the field to the people in the stands. Um, and it was just his life work, always leave him laughing, was his motto. And, you know, it's funny you talk about John Cruck, and I completely agree with you about John Cruck when he was with the Phillies. They bring a lightness to the game, right? Um, it's, let's not take this so seriously, because in this day and age, the way baseball is, it's a big, huge corporate affair where there's mm-hmm. a lot of money on the line. And, you know, and it's people like John Cruck, but really people like Max Packen who, do, you know, 50 years, 5,000 consecutive performances without once missing a date. Mm-hmm. Just go out there and make people laugh. Um, you know, it was a real gift that he, he gave to all of us, for sure. Well, Greg, really, I have really to tell important. you, and, put a smile on my face today just thinking about this, and and I'm so anxious <laughs> to learn more. We cannot wait to you know stay on the stay on the uh, on the heels of this uh, production that you're working on right now. So, number one, we want to make sure that you stay in touch with the preferred radio audience because there's a lot of baseball fans listening to the show right now, and we are definitely going to want to know when the film is available. Tell us how we can learn more. Our website, maxpatkin.com, M-A-X-P-A-T-K-I-N.com, is the best place to follow us and to um, get, we'll get the exact release dates, where to find it. Um, there is a little bit of background on there, you know, about a little bit of teaser kind of information about Max's life. And I'm grateful that you do and I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk about Max Packen and spread the word. Please stay in touch with us. Please come back when the film is coming out. And who knows, maybe we'll even have a preferred company um, a premiere party ourselves here for when the film comes out. I want to thank you, Greg DeBart, so much. We are so excited to have you here with us today. This is great. Greg DeHart and hey Greg, let me ask you a quick question. Do you miss playing baseball? Which did you like better, baseball or documentaries? Oh, which children do you like better, right? <laughs> um, I do. <laughs> I, I do miss it. Um, it. I'm a complete baseball geek still, so fortunately as a fan, I can kind of scratch that itch. Uh, but I love my documentary work. It's, uh, it's fascinating, and especially when the two come together right now, you can imagine. you got a blessed life. That's great. And thank you for sharing all this great stuff with our audience.